In this session, we are going to discuss the topic probability. The word probability, which is synonym with the word chance, is very frequently used in our day-to-day -day life. This word probability is used in a broad sense to indicate that there is a possibility of something to happen. For example, if I say the chances of you being selected as a probationary officer in a bank are high. Now here I am trying to say that it is possible that you can get selected as a probationary officer in a bank. So in this topic of probability, we try to measure the possibility of different events. Before we learn how to measure the probability of a particular event, we should understand some important terms related to probability. So let's have a look at them. The first one here is random experiment. Now before we take a random experiment, let us understand what is meant by experiment. Experiment in general is nothing but an operation or an event which has got some well-defined outcomes. Let us now see what is meant by a random experiment. Random experiment, an experiment whose outcome or result cannot be predicted even though all the possible outcomes are known in advance is called a random experiment. So here as the definition says, a random experiment is the one in which the outcome or the result cannot be predicted even though all the possible outcomes are already known to us. Such an experiment can be taken as a random experiment. For example, tossing a coin or throwing a dice etc. All these are called random experiments. Now when we toss a coin, we know that there are two possible outcomes. Either it can show a head or it can show a tail. Now even though we know that there are two possible outcomes, head or tail, we cannot predict what exactly will be the outcome or the result when a coin is tossed. So even though a coin is tossed n number of times under the same conditions, predicting the output at each of these instant is not possible. The other example that we have seen here is throwing a dice. Now we know that a dice has got six faces where each face is numbered from integers 1 to 6. So the six possible outcomes when we throw a dice or when we roll a dice are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. So we very clearly understand that the output will be any of these six integers. Now even though we know that these are the six possible outcomes, we cannot predict what exactly will be the output when a dice is thrown. So all such events where the output cannot be predicted even though all the possible outcomes are known to us are called as random experiments. So in the study of probability, we always take random experiments into consideration and try to measure what is the possibility or what is the chance of a particular outcome to occur when an experiment is conducted. Now the next point that we need to understand here is sample space. The set of all possible outcomes of a random experiment is called a sample space and usually it is denoted by the letter S. So sample space is nothing but the set of all those outcomes which can result for a given random experiment. For example, we know that when we toss a coin, there are two possible outcomes, either a head or a tail. So the sample space for tossing a coin will be head or tail. So this is the sample space for tossing a coin. Likewise, when we throw a dice, the sample space can be taken as all those possible outcomes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So these are the 6 possible outcomes when we throw a dice. So this can be taken as the sample space for throwing a dice. And in this sample space, each of these outcome is known as a sample point. For example, there are two sample points for tossing a coin. It can either be a head or a tail. So the possible outcomes are known as sample points. And the set of all these sample points is known as sample space. So head and tail are the sample points for the sample space of tossing a coin. Likewise, when we throw a dice, we know that the sample space is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now each of these elements here is known as a sample point. So sample point is nothing but a particular outcome for an event. And set of all possible outcomes is known as sample space. After learning about random experiment and sample space, let us now understand how to measure the probability of occurrence of an event. The probability of an event E is denoted as P of E. And in general, probability of an event lies between 0 and 1. That is the minimum probability is 0 and the maximum probability is 1. For an event which is impossible to happen, the probability is 0. And for an event which will definitely happen, the probability is taken as 1. For example, let's say that we have a biased coin which has got heads on both the sides. Now when we toss such a coin, what is the probability that the outcome is head? We know that the definite outcome there would be head. Why? Because on both the sides we have head here. So we say that the probability of head here is 1. That is the maximum probability. 
and similarly for such a coin what is the probability that the outcome is a tails now here the probability should be taken as zero why because we know that tails cannot appear for a coin which has got head on both the sides so probability for a definite event should be taken as one and probability for an impossible event should be taken as zero and in general probability of an event always lies between zero and one let us now see how to measure the probability of an event now as we know that probability of an event is denoted as p of e so p of e is equal to the number of favorable outcomes by total number of outcomes we have already learned what is meant by sample space sample space is nothing but set of all possible outcomes for a random experiment so out of all those possible outcomes the probability of a particular type of event to happen can be taken as number of outcomes which are in favor of that event divided by the total number of outcomes so number of outcomes which are in favor of the event can be taken as n of e and the total number of outcomes is nothing but all the sample points of the given sample space that is n of s so in general probability of an event can be taken as the number of outcomes which favor that event divided by the total number of outcomes so we can say that p of e is nothing but the probability of success of a particular event now how to measure the probability of failure of that event that can be taken as p of e dash or p of e bar which is equal to number of unfavorable outcomes divided by total number of outcomes so here this is called probability of failure where we see what is the chances that this particular event will not happen which can be taken as n of s minus n of e divided by n of s that is nothing but number of unfavorable outcomes number of unfavorable outcomes are total number of outcomes minus number of favorable outcomes so total number of outcomes is n of s minus number of favorable outcomes is n of e that divided by total number of outcomes again is n of s so when we simplify this we see that the probability of failure of an event or the probability that a particular event will not happen will be equal to n of s by n of s minus n of e by n of s now n of s and n of s gets cancelled so we get one here minus n of e by n of s is nothing but the probability of the event to happen so we can see that the probability of failure is equal to one minus the probability of success so from this we can say that probability of success plus probability of failure is always equal to one so for any given event the probability that the event will happen plus the probability that the event will not happen should be equal to one so probability of success of an event plus probability of failure of an event is always equal to one so this is how we can measure the probability of a particular event to happen and the probability of that event not to happen probability of an event to happen is taken as number of outcomes which are in favor of that event divided by total number of outcomes and probability of failure of that event or probability that the event will not happen can be taken as one minus probability that the event will happen let us take an example to understand these points we know that when we toss a coin the sample space is head or tail sample space here has got two possible outcomes either it can be a head or a tail so what is the probability that the output is a head now we know that probability of a particular event is nothing but the number of favorable outcomes by total number of outcomes or number of outcomes in favor of the event divided by number of outcomes in the sample space so probability that the output is head here should be taken as 1 by 2 why because out of these two outcomes there is only one outcome which is in favor of the event we want a head to occur and that can happen only in one way so 1 divided by total number of outcomes are 2 now what will the probability that the output is not a head that is the probability of failure this is the probability of success what is the probability of failure it can be taken as 1 minus probability of success so 1 minus 1 by 2 which is equal to 1 by 2 again so we can say that the probability that the output is head is equal to 1 by 2 and the probability that the output is not a head is again equal to 1 by 2 now the output is not a head means what it has to be a tail so that is nothing but the probability of a tail so total probability again if you try to observe probability of success plus probability of failure should be equal to 1 so here we see that the probability of tail or probability of outcome not to be a head is equal to 1 by 2 why because if the output should not be head it has to be a tail that can happen only in one way divided by total number of outcomes which is 2 so we can see that the probability of success 1 by 2 plus probability of failure 1 by 2 is equal to 1 so that is how we say that probability of head plus probability of not a head can be taken as 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 which is equal to 1 that is the total probability so always for a given event the probability of success plus probability of failure should be equal to 1 sometimes instead of directly giving the probability of success or the probability of failure of a particular event the odds in favor of the event or the odds against the event are given 
सो लेट सी वॉट इज मेन बाई ऑर्ट इन फेवर ऑफ एन इवेंट और ऑर्ट्स अगेंस्ट द इवेंट लेट से द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ सक्सेस ऑफ एन इवेंट ई is p of e which is given as n of e by n of s that is nothing but the number of favorable outcomes by total number of outcomes then the probability of failure of the event e is p of e bar which is given as n of s minus n of e by n of s that is nothing but the number of outcomes which are not in favor of e divided by the total number of outcomes so the first one here is the probability of success and this is the probability of failure Now, instead of directly giving the probability of success or the probability of failure of an event, the odds in favor of the event or odds against the event are given. So, let's understand what is meant by odds in favor and odds against the event. Now, odds in favor of an event E is equal to the probability of success divided by the probability of failure. P of E is the probability of success. P of E bar is the probability of failure. So, odds in favor of an event is nothing but probability of success divided by probability of failure. so that can be taken as number of outcomes which are in favor of the event divided by the number of outcomes which are not in favor of the event likewise odds against the event e is equal to the probability of failure of the event divided by the probability of success so this can be taken as n of s minus n of e by n of e that is the number of outcomes which are not in favor of the event divided by the number of outcomes which are in favor of the event so odds in favor is nothing but number of favorable outcomes by number of unfavorable outcomes whereas odds against is number of unfavorable outcomes by the number of favorable outcomes let's take an example to understand how to measure the probability of success or probability of failure when the odds in favor or odds against are given to us for example let's assume that odds in favor of a particular event are 3 is to 4 generally odds in favor or odds against are given in the form of ratio 3 is to 4 so odds in favor is equal to 3 is to 4 that means here there are three outcomes which are in favor of the event and four outcomes which are not in favor of the event so how do we get the probability of success from this so the probability of success can be taken as we know that probability of success is the number of outcomes which are in favor divided by total number of outcomes now from the ratio we know that because these are these are odds in favor the number of outcomes which are in favor are 3 So three divided by total number of outcomes are three plus four outcomes in favor plus outcomes not in favor. So three plus four, which can be taken as three by seven. So the probability of success from this can be taken as three by seven. And once we know the probability of success is three by seven, we can see the probability of failure will be one minus three by seven. That is equal to four by seven. Likewise, let's say odds against an event are given to us. Odds against a particular event. Odds against are, for example. 2 is to 5 so when odds against an event are given as 2 is to 5 it is very clear that 2 represents the number of outcomes which are not in favor of the event and 5 represents the number of outcomes which are in favor of the event why because these are odds against so unfavorable outcomes is to favorable outcomes now from this we can say that the probability of success or the probability of failure let's say the probability of failure can be taken as since two outcomes are not in favor we can say the probability of failure is 2 divided by the total number of outcomes 2 plus 5 7 so that can be taken as the probability of failure 2 by 7 now once we know the probability of failure 2 by 7 we can say that the probability of success will be 1 minus 2 by 7 that is equal to 5 by 7 so this is how we can find out the probability of success or the probability of failure as it is required from the odds in favor or odds against a particular event so simply remember that odds in favor is a ratio which shows favorable outcomes is to unfavorable outcomes so probability of success should be favorable outcomes by total of these two and probability of failure should be unfavorable outcomes by total of these two likewise odds against shows unfavorable outcomes is to favorable outcomes so from this probability of failure can be taken as the number of outcomes which are not in favor divided by sum of these two that is 2 by 2 plus 5 and the probability of success can be taken as favorable outcomes by total outcomes so 5 divided by 2 plus 5 can be taken as the probability of success